Hello, welcome to this video of time series databases. In this video, we are going to explore what time series databases are, why they matter, and how they are used in today's data driven world, right, in every sector, right. So, let's get started. What is time series database, right? Time series database, in simple terms, is designed to handle large volumes of data points which are indexed by time, right? So, the in, in various areas the data is stored in a column format which is optimized for time based access patterns right so if you take a look at a sample database with time series data right in this database that you are seeing there are six columns the first one is the timestamp right so that is the main important uh, column in this database right so let's say this database is reflecting the stock prices right so the first column is the time when the stock price data was recorded. Second column is the open price, that is the price of the stock at the beginning of the time period. Next is high price, which is the highest price of the stock during that time period. Low price is the lowest price of the stock during the time period. Closing close price is the price of the stock at the end of the time period. And volume, volume is the total number of shares of, of this company's stock that were traded during that specific time period right so now if you have this kind of a data this is a time series data right because stock trading and stock and are all uh, time series data right those are based on time so if you notice what are the kind of uh, access patterns that can happen on this kind of a data right on this kind of data set right so first is financial analysis right the data could be used to perform financial analysis on the company's stock right such as calculating returns or identifying uh, trends in the stock price over time right next is algorithmic trading right time series data like this uh, can be used to develop and test algorithmic trading strategies that aim to exploit the patterns right in stock price data right next is anomaly detection uh, the data could be used to detect anomalies or outliners right in the in the stock price or trading volume right which could be an indication of uh, of an early warning sign of say market instability or other problems right so those kind of anomaly detection can be done on this kind of data next is forecasting the data could be used to build models that attempt to forecast future stock prices right or say future trading volumes right based on historical patterns right so that is what time series data is and that is how time series databases are accessed based on various analysis, algorithmic trading, alg anomaly detection, forecasting, right? So there are various use cases. And the main thing here is the time, right? The time stamp. At every time stamp, what is the event that occurred? In this example, we are taking the stock price. So how is the stock price moving? What is the volume that is being purchased and all those data, which is over a period of time, right? So now, if we are going to represent this data in the form of code, right? So let's take this example. We already have the data set, so we can put the data points in the form of a of a JSON array, right? Where each object is basically the measurement that you see here is say the database. You know, time is the timestamp, and the fields are the remaining uh, fields of the database, right? Uh, which are open price, high price, low price, close price, and volume, right? So let's say we have these data points, which is a JSON array. Now, how InfluxDB is one of the most popular uh, time series databases out there. So, in InfluxDB, how can we retrieve, uh, like how can we uh, first of all plot the data and then how can we retrieve the data to make predictions, right, uh, make forecasting, right. And then finally, we can see how we can uh, create anomalies and anomaly detection out of the data that is there, right. So, if we take a look at this, the code first where is the basically the db database for the time series data and it converts the result to a pandas data frame right then it resamples the data to hourly intervals like if you see in the middle of the code it is uh, uh, resampling the data into hourly intervals and then fitting it into a profit model uh, fitting the data to a profit model right so profit is basically a facebook's profit library to detect anomalies right so there are various kinds of libraries that are av uh, available which can be used which whose apis can be used to perform various kinds of data analytics 
The model is then used to make predictions on the data and the resulting forecast is plotted like if you see at the bottom of the code and finally we are figuring out the potential anomalies right we are uh, the potential anomalies are being identifies, uh, identified as points where the predicted upper bound of the forecast is below the maximum observed value in the original data right so basically even if you don't know influx db what you can understand is we are basically getting the data from the database we are plotting it on a profit model right we are trying to make predictions and then creating an anomaly detection forecast from the data right so this is how at a high level that can be done and we are doing it using facebook's profit library right so now let's take a look at how time series databases are different from other databases right and in here we are also going to talk about various key features of time series databases so the first thing to remember is the data structure itself, right? Time series databases are specifically designed to store and organize time stamped based data, right? Uh, which is in a way that makes it easy to query and analyze. Right? Basically, that is what time series databases are. It typically involves storing data in columnar format, like we mentioned, uh, which is optimized for time based uh, access, access patterns, right? Next is obviously querying, wherever there is a database, there will be a query. So time series databases are specialized, have specialized query languages and APIs, like we saw for the uh, Facebook's profit model, right, uh, which are optimized for time series data, right. For example, they often support uh, window functions, aggregations, right, filtering based on time ranges, those are inbuilt into the libraries, right. Next is performance, obviously, because time series databases are optimized for time based data, they are often faster and more efficient at querying and analyzing large volumes of uh, time series data right than general purpose databases right next is compression and downsampling time series databases often employ techniques like data compression downsampling right uh, to basically reduce the storage requirements right and improve query performance that is because the data in a time series database is obviously the data set volume is huge so you have to uh, optimize on the uh, performance on query performance on uh, storage performance right uh, which is where you also have to need to uh, compress the data down sample the data right next is visualization uh, many times these databases come with uh, like i mentioned inbuilt tools for uh, aggregating and analyzing time uh, time series data uh, such as and plotting them on line charts, histograms, pie charts, uh, scatter plots, right? So visualization is an important aspect of time series data because it basically gives you a graph, right? A kind of a uh, human readable uh, mechanism in which the data can be represented, right? And last but not the least is high availability and fault tolerance, right? Since time series data is often critical to business operations, they're typically designed to be very highly available and fault tolerant. Right. Uh, basically, it has built-in replication, built-in disaster recovery capabilities. Right. So these are all uh, available when you are building a time, working with a time series database. Right. Overall, the main difference between time series databases and other databases is that the time series databases are specifically designed to handle large volumes of time-based, timestamp-based data and make it easy to analyze the that specific data set over a period of time. Right. Other databases are designed to be more general purpose and can handle a wide variety, wide range of data types and access patterns. But time series databases are primarily for time, for like the example that we saw. So it is primarily based on time based events, right? What are some of the applications of time series databases, right? This is where it will be important for you, where you will see how you can apply time series databases even in interviews if you are given a question around financial trading or anything you can apply time series databases which many people might not know right they might want to plot that into a, a relational database right uh, a series of time stamped based data right which might be a red flag in the interview right so the first sector is the finance sector right in the finance industry time series databases are used to store and analyze market data such as uh, like stock prices, currency exchange rates, right, commodity prices. The data is used to make uh, basically uh, to make investment decisions, right, forecast market trends, detect anomalies, right, detecting anomalies is a common pattern. 
time series databases are also used to store transactional data for financial institutions right where there is a transaction involved for example credit card transactions right account balances right so various almost every aspect of finance sector uses time series databases and handles time series data for various purposes right next is the manufacturing industry in the manufacturing industry time series databases are used to monitor and optimize production processes right for example uh, sensors on production lines can collect data on machine performance right energy consumption product quality right which can be stored in which all of them can be stored in time series database right the data can be used to identify areas of improvement uh, optimize production schedules right next is the energy sector in the energy sector industry industries time series databases are used to monitor and optimize energy production uh, production and consumption for example if we if we talk about sensors right the sensors collect data on power outage uh, or say temperature weather conditions which basically can be stored in time series databases right uh, this data can be optimized can be used to optimize energy production right forecast demand right detect anomalies again right next is iot so i've been talking about sensors so you can obviously understand iot is obviously one of the most used areas or industries where time series databases are very important basically to analyze to store and analyze sensor data from variety of devices right which can be smartphones wearables industrial equipments right basically to monitor device performance right um, optimize device functionality right last but not the least is the healthcare sector yeah it is healthcare sector uh, time series databases are quite widely used and used to specifically store and analyze say for example vital signs right patient data medication usage right test results right which are all time based events when are you taking a medi medicine right when did you take a blood test right for example which are all time based over a period of uh, period of time uh, and those are all time based data that are stored in time series databases right and these data can be used to monitor patient health um, uh, optimize any treatment plans provide any kind of suggestive uh, you know treatment plans or uh, or any kind of medication right so those are all various applications of time series databases like you can see it is almost used everywhere and there are a bunch of other places also i mean in airline industry in the aviation industry it's heavily used in automobiles is heavily used right so time series databases are almost everywhere now we have been talking about time series databases right so what are some of the popular time series databases right so let's look at those we have already talked about influx db which is basically a high performance distributed time series databases one of the most popular by handling large volumes of timestamp data right but what are the others next is amazon time stream right a fully managed time series database service from amazon web services that is basically designed to handle large scale time series data right it's a managed service it's a cloud provided service right prometheus a popular open source monitoring system uh, which is widely used for collecting and storing metrics data from software uh, applications right that is the primary use case of prometheus time series database right open psdb uh, which is again an open source uh, distributed time series database uh, which is primarily used use case is focused around real time analytics right next is dolphin db dolphin db again is a high performance distributed analytical database which is designed to handle highly large volumes of timestamp data and streaming data uh, primarily focusing on financial analytics like stock price trading like we mentioned right so those are some of the popular time series databases. Hopefully this was useful. Thanks for watching.